Okay, members. Mr. Dagna Magalier has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs. I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should raise continually in their places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. Clerk, please read the question. To ask the Minister of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs why live animals, dairy and meat products will continue to be allowed through Larne and Belfast ports in the absence of physical inspections, given the potential damage to our agri-food industry through the spread of disease and damage to our international reputation for high-quality, safe food. I would like to welcome the Minister to his first uh, question time as Minister. I do not think he expected this morning when you signed the pledge to be here this afternoon, but anyway. These things must, and uh, as I said earlier on, let that be a warning to all future prospective ministers that are on call around the clock. I call the Minister of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Speaker. And as this is the first opportunity that I have had uh, to address uh, the Chamber since my appointment, can I also uh, join other colleagues from, from across all parties? Uh, in sending my good wishes and prayers uh, to uh, Edwin Poots as he begins um, his treatment and uh, recovery. And we look forward to seeing him back here uh, in this place again uh, very soon. Uh, can I also uh, join my executive colleagues in condemning any threats made against workers and staff going about their duties at Belfast and Larne ports? As public servants, uh, these staff should be allowed to do their jobs without fear and it is unacceptable and intolerable that threats have been made. The threat should be lifted immediately, uh, and staff uh, should be able to do their jobs without fear or intimidation. There is no place for that in our society uh, against anyone going to their place of work. And for me, uh, staff safety is of paramount importance. Last night, the Department was notified by Mid East Antrim Borough Council that they were temporarily halting physical inspections in the Larne inspection facility. After discussions with partner organisations and the PSNI, the department also decided to temporarily suspend physical checks on products of animal origin. This decision was taken as a purely precautionary measure in the interest of staff safety. The department expects to receive a further risk assessment from the PSNI. DERA continues to uh, implement uh, documentary checks on all consignments moving from Great Britain uh, to Northern Ireland, uh, and seal checks continue to be carried out where possible in the ports in GB. Physical checks on POAO from GB are currently suspended. Physical checks on other categories uh, of goods uh, will continue to be carried out where local management and staff consider it safe to do so. These proportionate measures will help to ensure that any risk from imported goods um, is mitigated. Uh, as a temporary measure, this response is proportionate uh, with the lower uh, risks associated with these consignments, and it is consistent with DERA's overall uh, approach to verification. The member will be aware um, that there has been, of course, no change to food production standards, consequently no significant increased risk um, exists to um, consumers in Northern Ireland or the wider uh, agri-food industry, uh, and uh, we can all be assured uh, of that safety in regards to animal health, uh, plant health, and public health. Thank you. I call Dagla Magalier for supplementary. Uh, good, I can call you, and I thank the member for his answer, and I, I wish him well in his role. Uh, Congratulate him, and uh, I hope he does well. I look forward to working with him in my capacity as the Kahirla of the Era Committee. Um, I just want to say also at the outset that um, I and did we unequivocally condemn these threats as well. We want to pass on our solidarity with these workers, and the threats need to be lifted, and the PSNA need to investigate this thoroughly uh, to get to the bottom of it. And, if there's people need to be brought to a book for this, then that, that needs to happen, but it needs to be investigated thoroughly. Um, the Minister will be aware that checks have, have been carried out on animal and food and other plant products from Britain at Larne Port from the last century, so over 100 years, in order to protect the biosecurity of the island of Ireland and our under pressure agri food uh, sector. Does he agree that now is the time for calm heads and strong collective leadership to get these issues resolved? 
get the staff back to work, and get operations at the ports, ports resumed. Graham Elgott. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, although I don't intend to be uh, in post for a long time, I, of course, am more than happy to work with him uh, and with the committee uh, as well. Uh, and of course, we should all uh, have, have calm heads. There is a huge degree uh, of anger out there within the community, and we should all be aware of that because of the protocol and the consequences that it is having here in Northern Ireland. We have to be aware that that is the case. However, that is no excuse whatsoever for the threats and the intimidation uh, that we have seen. And unfortunately, we have had an awful lot of the raising uh, of the temperature uh, in the past, and the members' own party uh, have been guilty of that uh, in regards to the threats uh, that were mentioned during the uh, referendum and afterwards. And we saw tensions being raised. Uh, we saw um, leaders of his party constructing uh, fake walls and knocking them down uh, with sledgehammers. And we saw a lot of tension uh, ratcheted up uh, about a border on the island of Ireland that was never um, going to be put into place. Uh, what we have right now is uh, real consequences of the protocol being felt. I understand the anger uh, and I understand the frustration that people feel. But there is no justification whatsoever uh, for intimidating uh, workers who are going about uh, their jobs. And I think it's very important that that has been put on the record, not only by myself and by my party, but I know from right across uh, these benches uh, as well. And so I think um, the most important thing for all of us uh, should be the safety uh, of staff, and, and that's what's important to me right now. Can I call William Irwin? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And can I welcome the Minister to his new post? And uh, well, I hope our former minister is back to health and strength as soon and able to resume the post. Well, the minister gave his assessment on the need for products that are solely for the consumption in Northern Ireland being checked at all, given that it poses no risk whatsoever to the single market. Well, of course, the, the authors of the protocol uh, would say that the reason why it was needed was to protect uh, the EU single market. However, there is um, uh, the UK internal market as well that we need to be uh, wary of. We need to recognise um, that it, um, it has been damaged and that it has been affected uh, by the protocol. And there does not seem to be any sense um, in moving items from Great Britain and Northern Ireland and requiring checks on those items uh, if they are not going to go in uh, to the EU single market. So that is why I think that uh, the protocol needs to go. Um, I think that it is, it is wrong in the way that it creates those additional burdens and the, those additional um, barriers to, to trade within the UK internal market, which of course is our most uh, important uh, market. And the problems with the protocol aren't just problems, by the way, for unionists, because it affects all of us here in Northern Ireland. It affects all consumers, uh, and that's why it's so important um, that we get rid of it um, because of the damage that it is doing. Call Linda Dillon. Gormaiogut, Ken Corlea. I thank the Minister for his answer so far, and I also want to wish you well in your, in your post, albeit temporary, hopefully. And I was remiss this morning and didn't offer my full support and solidarity to the Minister in his ongoing battle with, with his current health circumstances. So really want to just let Edwin and his family know that we're thinking of them and that we wish them all the very best in the future. Minister, do you have any time frame as to when the, the PSNI update might happen? And if some checks are taking place but not others, how would anybody who has made the threat different, differentiate as to what checks are being made if, if there are some staff still are taking part in checks? Well, obviously, um, Mr. Speaker, this is a um, uh, situation that's changing uh, rapidly all the time, and the PSNI have to be given the time to, to do their work, and then we will also carry out our departmental uh, risk assessment into this, as everyone would expect us uh, to do. Um, I cannot give um, the member a timeline because there is no um, way in which that can be um, can be given because the situation is changing uh, so much, and I think that she she would understand that that is the case. And as I've said before, the most important thing uh, in all of this is the is the safety of staff. That that's what has to come first before uh, any, any timeline. In regards to the uh, checks that are are, are taking place, um, many of those are taking place uh, off site. Um, or uh, in NGB, and it is the uh, checks that are taking place in those ports uh, that have been suspended uh, at this period of time. And it's, it's right that that's the case. Nicole Matthew O'Toole. 
Thank you, um, Mr. Speaker. I, like others, would like to welcome um, the Minister uh, to his post and, uh, and wish him well. He's, he's doing it in, the, in not the most auspicious circumstances, given his, um, Edwin Putz's illness, but we wish um, Mr. Putz well, and, and he has all our, our best wishes. Um, uh, can I ask the Minister two connected questions? One, can he confirm um, that his staff, it's his view that his staff should be um, enabled to do their job unencumbered uh, as the law sets out, including checks. Can you just confirm that? Number two, um, can I ask, given that all of us want to see disruption, including east-west disruption, minimised, would he be willing to make representations to the UK government that it would be beneficial for Northern Ireland to have a greater, for the UK to enter into negotiations for a greater level of sanitary and phytosanitary alignment with the EU, as Switzerland and Norway both have, including a, an agreement on veterinary standards, would he be willing to make those representations to the UK? Because that would be one important step towards minimising disruption. Well, Mr. Speaker, on, on his first point, I, I don't think I could have been any clearer. I completely condemn what has taken place, and I believe that people should be able to go about and, and to do their jobs. Uh, and the point he makes in regards to uh, SPS um, coordination, we currently have that right now. Uh, we, we currently have those similar standards, yet the protocol is causing huge problems, um, even, as, even when we have the, the, those similar standards. So what we need to do is find um, that, that solution, um, and, and that's getting rid of the protocol uh, and making sure that we have common sense solutions um, to the uh, issues that arise out of the result um, that the UK is out of the European Union. I call Steve Egan. Thank you very much indeed. May I join everybody else in welcoming the Minister to his new uh, post? And I think earlier on today we wished uh, Edwin and all his family all the best, but I re echo it at this stage now at the moment. Um, Minister, obviously, uh, just being new into the post, you haven't had enough an opportunity to talk to the vets and indeed talk to the veterinary scientists across on the other side of our nation. But in the 32 days since uh, we have moved on, since the protocol has been placed, has there been any indications at all from any of the veterinary authorities? that anything has changed within the standards between what we had on the end of December and the standards we have right now? Um, can I, f first of all, thank um, not only Mr Aiken but all of the members um, for their kind words, um, both for uh, Edmund Putz as he, as he recovers and, and for myself as I begin uh, in this position. Um, I have only been in for, for a few hours uh, in post, uh, however, I am not aware of any problems that have come up uh, as a result um, of the end of the transition period or any, any problems that vets have, have identified um, at this stage. I will, of course, be more than happy to uh, confirm that with the member uh, in writing, but I think he does make a, a good point, as I had outlined in the initial answer to my question. There have been no changes in the um, rules in, in terms of food standards, and um, that is why um, these, uh, the protocol which requires these, these checks needs to go. I call John Blair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Can I add to, to the welcome to the Minister to, to his post and sincerely wish him well for the times ahead? And can I ask the Minister to confirm that there will be a determination on behalf of the Department um, that the threat of violence cannot influence government policy, international obligation, or the resolve for all of us to work together to seek solutions to current EU exit issues? I, I can absolutely confirm that um, the policy of my department and I hope of the whole executive um, will not be uh, influenced in any way um, by sinister uh, elements. Of course, we have to take precautionary measures uh, when necessary, but the way in which we go about changing things, such as um, the problems that have come about as a result uh, of the protocol, is through peaceful and democratic means, um, something that we have all committed to uphold whenever we took our seats in this place. Well, Claire Bailey. Thank you, Speaker. And I too welcome the Minister to his new post. I also look forward to working with and maybe even seeing him at committee. That would be great. Um, 
But in light of the fact, Minister, that Northern Ireland currently has a number of very serious ongoing cases of avian flu and the dire consequences that that brings, um, I can only imagine how busy your, your first day has been. Um, but, Minister, have you met with port inspectors today? Um, and what is their assessment of the fact that no checks are being done? Um, how much livestock has come into Northern Ireland unchecked? And is this legal? Um, uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm more than happy to uh, uh, attend the, the committee uh, if, if I am invited, and I'm still uh, in post at the time that that could, could take place. Um, the, as, as Ed outlined, the um, checks on, on livestock um, that have always taken place and have been taking place for decades continue um, to take place at this time. I call Jim Allister. I want to ask the Minister about who has. Um Let's say sovereignty at our ports. If the DERA department declines to operate these checks, is it true that no one else can, the EU or anyone else? Um, Mr. Uh, Speaker, my understanding would be that uh, in terms of checks that take place, the only um, people that would be able to carry them out would be the competent authority, which would either be the department or uh, Mid East Andrew Borough, Borough Council. That's my understanding. I don't want to, to mislead um, the gentleman on that, and I can certainly um, come back to him uh, in, in writing with confirmation of that. I call Morris Bradley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and could I join with uh, colleagues in welcoming the minister to his first meeting, and also extend best wishes to Edwin for a, a full and successful and speedy recovery. Can I ask the Minister, given the, the uh, outworkings of what has happened uh, at Larne and Belfast, will, will he give a commitment to ensure that the safety of his staff and that they are protected and to keep the situation under review going forward? Um, yes, uh, Mr Speaker, that is absolutely the case. Um, as, as I have said, the uh, safety of the staff is my prime concern uh, at this moment uh, in time, and it does need to be kept uh, constantly uh, under review. This is a uh, rapidly changing uh, situation. Um, there are various um, uh, threats uh, or um, issues that have to be taken into uh, consideration. Um, I think it is exceptionally disappointing that we are in this place where, where this has taken place, um, so I can assure him that in conjunction with the police and with the councils, we will keep this uh, under review. Well, Philip McGuigan. Uh, uh, I want to condemn uh, any threats against workers, some of whom are constituents of mine at both Larne and Belfast ports. Uh, everyone uh, should be able to go about his or her work free from intimidation. Uh, I am a bit disappointed at the tone and comments uh, in response to my party colleague, Minister, uh, equating a bit of pageantry with the current threats that we currently have. I mean, and can I ask the Minister, given the current threats, uh, does he regret uh, some elected representatives uh, whipping themselves and others up into a state of hysteria over the weekend after the non-triggering of Article 16? Well, Mr Speaker, I really have to say um, the member needs to take a look back over the last um, number of years and the raising of tensions and the inflammatory language um, that many on the uh, pro-Remain side use and, and of course the, the members' uh, own party as well. Of course, it was the, the member from Miss Anderson who famously stood up in the European uh, Parliament and told the then British Prime Minister to um, stick her border where the sun uh, don't shine. Um, so I think the, the member needs to look at himself and his own party uh, when we talk about uh, inflammatory language. Uh, but for my part, Absolutely. Uh, I think that we need to tackle these very serious and very difficult issues um, in, in, in a measured way. We need to make sure that we uh, remain calm and, and deal with them where they can be dealt with. In um, lobbying the, the, the government, lobbying uh, members of parliament and the European Commission and showing them how the protocol is not uh, the solution that they had thought that it was. Okay, can I say to the remaining speakers that I need to keep within the rails of respect in the rest of this discussion? Justin McNulty. Ah, more Ort, Minister. Big luck on you. I hope it's just a caretaker role. I hope we see Minister Poots uh, overcoming his latest challenge and we wish him and his family well in uh, their uh, new battle. Minister, what's your assessment of whether the disruption of checks at either Lauren or Belfast will delay 
delivery of goods to either shops, farms or garden centres in the days ahead or in the weeks and months ahead? Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, there is no uh, risk to supply in Northern Ireland to shops or to supermarkets or anywhere else. Call Roy Beggs. I too would like to congratulate the Minister uh, on his appointment, particularly challenging times at present, uh, and also share uh, my agreement with others that the, uh, my wish that the uh, threats against staff would be immediately come to an end. Uh, Minister, I would understand there are very few live animals moving through our ports, particularly at this time of the year, but it's mainly HGV bringing in foods to our supermarkets and our agri-food industry exporting goods to their GB market. So my question to the Minister is, uh, were there blockages or delays at their ports, would the Minister accept there could be animal welfare issues for any animal that might be in transit? But secondly, the, the cargoes, which are all very time sensitive, could end up being dumped at huge cost to manufacturers and could result uh, to gaps on our supermarket shelves. And will he engage uh, with government at Westminster and with the EU to come up with pragmatic, simplified solutions which will prevent difficulties that are occurring? Well, I thank the member for his questions. And first of all, I don't believe that there are any issues in relation to animal welfare, but of course we will keep that under review. Um, but he's, he's, he's quite right. Um, there are a huge number of concerns that have been expressed out there by hauliers and others in relation to the problems that can come from, um, the, from, from the protocol. Uh, as, as, as junior minister um, in the executive office, which seems like um, an age ago already, um, I had daily meetings with um, uh, Her Majesty's government in relation to the problems that were coming about as a result. And um, the fears that there were, um, of, and, and, and practical examples that there were as well, of uh, consignments um, coming into Northern Ireland and some of the loads not having the necessary documentation and how that holds everything up. And, as the member aware, that can be potentially very costly uh, for all of those uh, involved. That is why we need solutions to the problems that we face right now, and the protocol is not one of them. I call uh, Mr Harry Harvey. Thank you. Mr Speaker, and firstly, I wish you well, Minister, in your new position, and also I wish Hedman a speedy and full recovery. Would the Minister outline the material risk to Northern Ireland's reputation as a result of the steps taken by the Department? Thank you. Uh, I thank the member for his question and good wishes, and I can confirm to him that I don't believe that there is uh, any material risk to the reputation uh, of Northern Ireland, as, as was indicated uh, within the, the question that the member uh, asked. Um, consumers um, and, uh, of, of produce here in Northern Ireland uh, can be assured that there is no threat um, whatsoever uh, to, um, to, to, to people here as a result of the, of the changes that have, have, have taken place. And um, I'm pleased that that's the case and that we can continue to have uh, that confidence in, in, in our produce. Um, we've rightly heard the condona condonations of the events that have transpired at Lorne, but I was disappointed to hear on the radio this morning that Mr Beggs refused to offer his support to the workers um, at Lorne Port or to state whether he supported them. Can I offer the Minister the opportunity to state whether he unequivocally supports the workers at Lorne Port carrying out their duty to check SPS? Well, uh, Mr. Speaker, I don't think it's um, right for, for me to speak on behalf of, of Mr. Beggs. However, uh, I, I believe if he had the, the opportunity, he would say the same uh, as me, which is um, staff safety uh, is paramount. And when these threats were actually were first made um, about a week ago, there was graffiti in, in, in our constituency. And um, I put a statement out right away saying that it was wrong, saying that it harked back to where we would have been 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, whenever people in this country were intimidated and prevented from doing their work wherever they were, uh, particularly in regards to the, to the security services. And yes, of course, absolutely, I believe that people should be free uh, to get on with their job without uh, intimidation. That is not something that is difficult for me to say. And not only do I hold that position now, but I have always held it. 
Call Jonathan Buckley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, this question is yet another example of a cutting your nose off to spite your face policy from pro remain parties in this House. The trade in livestock across the Irish Sea is something that has taken place unhindered for centuries. Is the Minister in agreement? that this situation which we face is yet another example of the outworkings of the protocol, which further highlights the societal and economic pressures which it has placed in Northern Ireland, and therefore would he agree with me in calling on Her Majesty's Government to enact and enable Article 16 to bring this sham to an end? Uh, Mr Speaker, to answer, to answer the member, yes, and for any number of reasons. Choose your benchmark. Uh, for, there's, there's, a, there's a number of reasons why the protocol needs to go and, and why it is wrong. First of all, you've got the Good Friday Agreement, very clearly a breach of the Good Friday uh, Agreement, far be it from me uh, to be a defender of that document, but nobody else on the be benches opposite is at this moment in time. Safeguards, community safeguards, gone. We don't care about that anymore. That's what the uh, members on the other side of the House uh, are, are saying. Uh, Northern Ireland's place within the United Kingdom uh, as secured uh, within the agreement until the majority of people in Northern Ireland want to change the position of Northern Ireland? No, nope, that, that doesn't seem to matter anymore because our, our, our change, our position, uh, our position has been fundamentally changed um, by the protocol. Look at the protocol itself. Um, have there been social um, and economic disruption as a result of the protocol? Absolutely. Uh, when the protocol was meant to um, uh, not uh, have any change, um, on significant change on the impact of how people live their lives here in Northern Ireland. That's certainly not the case now, um, because I've been talking to people across my constituency who are having trouble bringing in parts for farm machinery, uh, bringing in parts for CB radios, uh, all sorts of problems that are being faced here. So um, the protocol has failed. Uh, the protocol has to go. Um, Article 16 is a tool. Um, but we also need to put um, uh, the pressure on the government, make representations to the European uh, Commission and, and get this to, to come to an end um, for the benefit of the people of Northern Ireland. Well, Martina Anderson. Goeimi Agud, I can call you. Um, I too want to wish Edmund and his family all the very best going forward and, um, and I wish you luck too in replacing him. I know you have big shoes uh, to fill and I want to also acknowledge Gary Milliton who is trying to step into your brief uh, for the time that you are away. Um, I also, like others, would like to condemn the threats that have been made, and those threats need to be withdrawn uh, in whatever way they've come about. Minister, there is no doubt that east-west trade is important, but I think, as you recognise, the largest market that we have is the EU and the rest of the world, and the statistics prove that. There's been uh, a trading adjustment shock, Minister, uh, I know we've talked about this at committee and others when you were a junior minister. So today, Minister, can I ask you, one of your MPs uh, said that there should be a change to north-south uh, cooperation. Is that the position now of, uh, of the DUP, given the fact that 80 per cent of our SMEs, which employ the lion's share of workers here, operate on an all-Ireland basis. So I think it would be good for you to clarify if the statement that was made today, the comments by your the MP, then, if that uh, is reflective of your and your party okay, position. Thank you. Well, I have to say the member is just fundamentally wrong to say that our biggest market is the EU. Our biggest market is the rest of the United Kingdom, and that needs to be protected. And now, now we can see uh, why um, the uh, party opposite um, doesn't care about the uh, implications that the protocol is having. It's because it doesn't understand the importance of east-west trade. It doesn't even understand uh, the um, implications um, that the protocol uh, is having. In terms of north-south um, uh, work, um, I want to, to make sure um, that whenever we have um, engagement with the government in the Republic of Ireland, that we make the case to them about why the protocol is wrong and why uh, it needs to go, and I'll be using uh, opportunities um, uh, in, in, uh, with, with meetings with, with my uh, uh, counterparts um, to, to make the case and to press the case for that to, to happen. I call Jim Wells, and we have less than two minutes left. Thank you. We all hope that Mr. Poots will be back as soon as possible. Will he confirm that soil, plants, budgies, 
dogs, etc., which were imported on the 31st of December and were totally safe are equally safe today. Um, Mr. Speaker, I see no reason why anything that was safe uh, to bring into Northern Ireland from the rest of the UK on the 31st of uh, December would be any less safe uh, today, uh, and that's why the protocol needs to go. And that concludes this item of business. Thank you, members. Point of order, Roy Beggs. Speaker, a few minutes ago, the member opposite made accusations against me. Would the Speaker undertake to review the contributions I have made in Hansard today, where I showed clear support for all the workers uh, working at our ports, carrying out their duties, and clearly indicating my wish that any threats against them would be removed? I will do. I will review the Hansard. Okay, thank you. Members, take your ease for a moment or two, please.